we throw around the terms artificial intelligence, IoT, data analytics in real time, and it can, they, they can easily become buzzwords. Well, we're in the midst of a massive tran uh, transformation right now that's going to really test our ability to turn those buzzwords into real change that will affect the way we live, the way we work, the way we get around. And that is the rapid influx of populations into cities. I want to share a statistic. So by 2050, city populations are expected to surge from 3.6 billion to 6.3 billion. That's more than 60%. Cities are going to face fresh challenges with this rapid influx of people. And in this next portion of the program, it's my pleasure to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with BlackBerry CEO John Chen, who will bring a very unique perspective to this question of how cities will be enabled to use the technologies like IoT to improve quality of life, to improve the way they run, to improve the way we live. And specifically, we're going to spend some time talking about cars and transportation and this idea that cars will run on data as opposed to gasoline. Um, so I want you to uh, join me in welcoming BlackBerry CEO John Chen to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And as we get started, we're going to do one, one more quick poll to get the conversation started. Um, and so if you want to pull out your app, uh, your smartphones, how do you see automation most enhancing or alleviating the driver experience? How is automation going to change the driver experience the most? So please take a moment to uh, chime in. Is it going to be in the area of security? Is it going to make the driving experience more convenient? Is it going to affect emissions, specifically carbon fuels? Or do you see it having the most impact on traffic and congestion? All right. Looks like, looks like traffic and congestion, at least at the moment, is ahead. So feel free to continue to fill that out as we get started on our conversation. John, thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> it was great meeting you backstage and, and getting the conversation started. So I want to talk first about kind of the, the transformation that's going on at BlackBerry. A lot of that has been j driven by you, uh, John. And at first blush, you might think transforming a mobile phone company, that company that we all associate with, with, the, with, the, with the BlackBerry that a lot of us, it took a while to wean ourselves off of. Some of us haven't quite fully uh, done, gone through that process. It might be hard to imagine going from running a company that focuses on smartphones to one that focuses on cars and security. But on, on further reflection, it, it's actually not that much of a leap. Um, we joke in the newsroom as we've, as we've entered the iPhone era about how, and, and you think about the way that Tesla is run and the way that our cars are just being updated by a software upgrade. It's not that much of a leap to go from thinking about cars as a means of transportation to cars as a big smartphone on wheels. So I want to hear a little bit about that transformation that's going on. How do you make that leap, and how's it going so far? Um, it, it, like you pointed out, um, when I first started with BlackBerry, um, you know, this, it, the situation with cell phones well documented. Um, I, I don't know how many of you, it looks like there's a lot of young people in the audience, um, but, you know, I dare say the majority of all of you have been customers of BlackBerry one time and another. Um, and, so, and it meant a lot, you know, it meant, what does it mean to have a BlackBerry? I remember when I first started, when I, have, when I was given a BlackBerry pager, that's all how old I am, a pager, I was so elated. I mean, it's better than I'm getting, you know, 100% raise or something, because it tells me that my management deemed me very important that I need to be got hold of at any time of day. And that's a badge of honor. That means I'm somebody, I'm arrived. And of course, not to mention the phone itself. Um, 
I remember those those good days. But if you think about BlackBerry, what BlackBerry does, you know, it has secure communication. That's why bankers and lawyers and um, you know journalists, um, you know, President Obama, Hillary Clinton, and and all the lights. That's why they all uses it. Um, and and the, the the underpinning of that um, was really based on all these the encryption technology. And the, and the security hardening technology and, and the algorithm around how we transfer data around, how we don't eat up all your batteries so you need to buy a new, new version of the, phone, of the iPhone. Um, you know, no, we don't do those things. Right? We, we make it a very productive, predictable, and safe, trusting thing. And, and the, the algorithm, this is why you hear me say a lot about the number of patterns. So if there's one thing that draw me to this job, which, by the way, at the time, it's not that big a deal because nobody they asked wanted a job. <laughs> and I need to get out of my house. So my wife wants me to go as far as I possibly can. We live in the Bay Area. She thinks uh, in Toronto is pretty good, uh, is a good distance. So, um, so, so I went there. The, 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 anyway, you heard me talk a lot about um, the patents. But if you look at the patent, we have about 40,000 patents today. Because we, we wean it down a little bit. For those of you in business long enough, you know patent is very expensive to keep. So we, we kind of took it down to a really finite set of the patents. For maybe like when I first started a company, about 50,000 patents and now about 40,000 patents. Only 26% of our patents are related to hardware whether it's the keyboard, you know, the shape of the keyboards and all that, the keys and so forth. The remaining of all that are based on Certicom, that those people who knows, it's a cryptology company that's, uh, that's famous for the elliptical algorithms. I know this is a mouthful. I use these words all the time to impress people. Half the time I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but the term, <laughs> but the term is real. Um, um, so, uh, so, and, and, and it has to do with like how we transport data, and this will come into play, um, well, with the survey. Uh, it, um, how we apply those data in, in embedded solutions, uh, and that's the most important thing. And this is how we got onto the autonomous vehicle and the connected vehicle. Uh, we, have a, we have a unit that built operating, embedded operating system called QNX. I don't know how many people know that. It's now cu currently embedded in about 120 million cars out there. We usually provide infotainment system. We have gotten into a lot of different areas like the clusters and the ADARs and the list goes on. I don't bore you with detail. So, the, the, so our algorithm, our know-how as a company, we're into securing data, transferring data, and making it private. So if you think about that, this is where the pivot comes from. We decide to get away from applying to BlackBerry hardware and apply to any hardware. Any hardware meaning it could be, obviously it could be an iPhone, could be an Android, could be a Linux, could be a window phone, but way, way, way beyond that. We want to put in a car, we want to put in the aerospace, aerospace, you know, planes, and we have a unit that, that focus on tracking trailers and, um, and, and cargo movement, and, and the list goes on. Um, and that's what we're doing, and as a company. So how, uh, how are we doing today? Uh, I'm at least pleased to say um, we will cross, we'll do about over a billion dollar in software revenue this year, and about the majority, 80% of those are in security and software, I mean, security and safety software. Now you have another big challenge ahead of you, and that's the, that's the evolution of, of autonomous driving and the move into autonomous. So how do you go, how do you, how challenging is it going to be to embark on this next pivot, if you will? Well, we have we provide embedded software to 120 million cars on the road today. There's about a billion one vehicle out there. So you know, although you know, you say, well, that's about about 12 percent. Um, but um, the 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 car that needs the embedded software are usually in the mid-range and high-end cars. So these are all your. German name cars and a lot of the Japanese cars and so forth. So that that range. Um, now, the car business, the auto business is is a really really exciting business. I mean, it, I I can, it, it's <laughs> it's at the verge of complete changeover, and you're going to see the market consolidate and fight like crazy. 
Um, so first of all, the kind of the, the big elephant in the room, obviously, is, is the Android Auto. Okay. Android Auto is trying to disrupt, like Android have, Google had done in many, many markets. Uh, whether they were successful or not, this is where all the excitement comes about. You hear today, this morning, the news of Volkswagen creating VW.OS. I don't know how many people read the news. Um, and they are building the layer to buffer what, what the customer sees. Now, this is very interesting. Why would they do that? Well, they wanted to take that out of the hands of the Android because Google wants the data and wants the user, just like Google wants the phone. Google care less about the operating system of the phone, but they care about us using the, the operating system and accumulated data and, and, and information, and this is obviously the big fight of the future. So I, I was, um, you know, the earlier survey was interesting. I didn't see two other things, privacy and safety. I didn't see that, and maybe you, you, you don't view that as a, as a benefit as much, but, but it is the most important thing. So that's one fight. And then you have, of course, if you don't need to look for farther than many places in Silicon Valley. Um, Silicon Valley are full of manuf car manufacturing company, the GM, the, uh, the Ford, uh, you know, they, they're, all out, they're all out here. You know? Earlier, Tom asked me, well, do I have to go to Detroit a lot? I, I don't need to go to Detroit at all, for that matter. I mean, I went to the Detroit Auto Show every year when it's very cold. Um, I, I don't need to go to Detroit. They're here. They're, they're in the valley. Uh, they, they, <laughs> they're building electric cars. They're building autonomous drive platform. They, they're not bending metals. They're building algorithmic technology, AI technologies, the list goes on. Stay tuned to this. You know, this is a very exciting field because you have one big pillar and everybody around it trying to either collaborate with that pillar or to try to separate that pillar from being vertically integrated. Um, it, it's going to be a few really exciting market. How do you guard against overhype? I, I, I look at the hype cycle around autonomous vehicles, and I, I think, in my view, it peaked right around the time Intel bought Mobileye. It was like just that. That's I mean, people could disagree with that, but uh, hmm. you know, clearly, this is a, this is not coming to market as quickly as I think a lot of people hoped and projected. We never really. And why is that? Yeah, we never expected. So th this, I, I don't, I don't want to use up all the time, but. Um, so the money is actually not so much in the autonomous vehicle today. It's in the connected car. And it's the data that generated in the connected car. Everybody wants to talk about autonomous vehicle because I guess, you know, it's it kind of the most related to a sci-fi movie or something. It's not that. Then this whole topic of how the cell-driven car and connected car fit into the smart city that created the traffic, uh, benefits or the congestion benefit. But I wanted to point out even on life-saving benefits, you know, we look up, for example, on a global basis, there are 1.3 million people die of auto accidents every year, okay? It, you know, if we could get the autonomous and connected vehicle really doing analytics, you know, real time well enough to prevent 90%, 75%, 50% of that, you think about the number of lives we've saved and the productivity, the productivity it created. This is why every city wants to be a smart city. Now, of course, there's, you know, this is the beginning of the, you know, the tip of the iceberg. But the point is, um, it's not hype, but it always taken longer. There's also another element in this case. Data privacy is a huge element. Um, Anti-hacking is a huge element. The so-called artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is really nothing more than data modeling. It's nothing more than a sophisticated way to describe statistics. And 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 they, the, the, you know, the, this is why the Chinese things they always have an advantage because they have more people, they have more statistic, and they have more model. And they have more model, the model is more accurate. Therefore, they are more better in AI. I, 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 it's debatable. That's a different topic altogether. The most important thing right now is to make sure that the private sector and the public sector has a go forward plan. What the whole data privacy discussion right now with over Facebook and, and Google and everything, it's just an interruption to that path. The path of fully using data as a guide 
to what you the action that is going to follow that a lot of them are machine to machine based and 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 if you could achieve that um, the productivity the convenience the safety the everything we talk about will come I want to turn to cities but before we do I don't want to get too far from Blackberry I want to ask the question of there still seems to be a lack of there's a bit of dissonance between the public's understanding of what BlackBerry is, what more do you need to do in your tenure as CEO to get the public, whether it's the consumers, whether it's the, the business customers, whether it's Wall Street, to better understand the BlackBerry story and the new version of who you are? And is there a rebranding that has to happen? You've already, you've changed your name already, so uh, I didn't change the name. I came in the name. Sorry. Blackberry has changed his name. Right, right. Um, I always, uh, I always have a funny story um, I, I, on name changing. Uh, it, it, un, so I won't change the name. Uh, I may go back <clears throat> to the word RIM, research in motion. Okay, but, uh, but, but, uh, but I'm not going to change the name. Here, here, but I'll answer the question because this is a very favorite topic of mine. Uh, because most people in, in my company say exactly what you just said, Tom, and say, why don't we just change the name? and rebrand ourselves and all that. Okay, so I, don't, I wanted to challenge every one of you. Give me a name change in a technology company, or any company for that matter, that actually worked and created value. <laughs> Give me one name change, one example, please. Verizon. Verizon, change from what? They just a conglomerate. They had Verizon before, they just used one name. Okay, uh, okay now, so this is, a, this, is a, this is akin to the following story. I always tell my troops that, and they actually get the point across. You know, my son doesn't do very well in math at school. He came home one day and I said, you know what, tomorrow we're going to go back to the office at school and change your name. So, so today his name is Justin. Tomorrow, I, I don't know, Tom. We're going to go back and say, this is Tom Chan. Justin is no longer enrolled. So do you expect him to do better in math? I take, I take that as a no, then. I, I, I don't find it logical. Yeah. I, 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 I know there is so much, that's a big brand in BlackBerry. Whether you like it, you think we sucks, you think we are goner, uh, and whatever you think you are. Now that you know we're not only you know, doing well, aim at some really high-end market. By the way, we just spent $1.4 billion cash to buy Silence, which is an AI company. Okay, so, and we're going to integrate that into the enterprise system that's being used by government and banks and law firms and hospitals and so forth, and we're going to put it in the car. So, I, it takes a long term to, 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 for me, it's really about the results you generate. Eventually, the story will take shape. Taking longer, why? Because there's a pre, you know, the perception, a preconceived notion of you guys are in trouble. Um, and, but, at the same time, the benefit of using the BlackBerry name, I always think, was wh whatever your view is Black about BlackBerry, there are two things that I'm pretty sure. Number one, you have association with BlackBerry. If I change the name to ABC Company, you have no more association. There are no emotional connections. So if you guys are in branding, I'm not sure if all you, a lot of you are here in branding, the number one hardest thing to do is to, do, is to have the emotional connection. Okay, you could call it whatever name you want to call it. You have to have an emotional connection. So, so this is why a BlackBerry is still good or bad. You would want to, you have an emotional connection. Then, then you want to, because you have an emotional connection, you wanted to know what we're doing. Good or bad, right? Believe it or believable or not otherwise. And, and this is why, you know, a name is actually, I feel very proud of the name and I don't want to walk away from the heritage, but there is a lot of brand equity, true, I have to spend a lot of time, I just did, <laughs> explaining why we're still around and be okay and you should do well with us. <laughs> before, we, before we close, okay. I do want to hear from you about the, uh, the advent of smart cities and using what we call the Internet of Things to ensure that we are getting cities ready for this population influx. How instrumental is 5G going to be in that transformation and do you see obstacles to the rollout of 5G in a political milieu where, where we have one of the most powerful countries in the world opposing what some would say is the leader in 5G technology. 
Okay, that's a very interesting question. So I think 5G is an able, and a lot of, I know a lot of the faces in the audience here that you folks had a lot more. Um, you know, Sanjay will have a lot more things to say about 5G. Uh, and and it, it, 5G is an enabler. There will be six, seven, eight, nine, ten Gs, or whatever they call it, right? Okay, so I, I read a joke this morning. I, mean, I don't know, if, if I'm really running out of time, you have to stop me, okay? I, I read a joke this morning, it was really funny. This is a joke about, this is a cartoon between, um, uh, you know, Xi Jinping uh, of China, of course, and, and President Trump. And, and President Trump is say, um, a, a Xi Jinping was telling, asking Trump, I said, why, why do you say, why did you accuse us of stealing your 5G technology? And, and, um, and you don't even have it in U.S. And then, then Trump said, exactly, because you stole it. Um, <laughs> okay. I thought it was, I, it's not relevant to the do answer to the question, but, but, do you not, I, I, but I gotta say it. I, I, do you not, but do you not see... There are no political implications here. Do you buy the argument that as one superpower tries to rein in Huawei, that that is going to inhibit the rollout of 5G? I don't, I don't think so. I really don't think so. I mean, I, I mean it's, it's, not, it's, it's public news that Chuck Robbins had publicly stated at the World Economic Forum that, that Cisco will have a solution in 5G. Uh, the Ericsson is doing 5G today, and Samsung is working on it, and you all know that, and they, they have made it very public, and they do it in, 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 in Seoul. So, I mean, there are more choices than just... I, I wish that the Huawei situation could be resolved. And, and, and uh, you know, all joking aside, it will be resolved. And because it, it really has to say, you have to step back and, and find a collaborative way to get this thing. We, you know, our country is concerned about, you know, backdoor traps, you know, super, super users, blah, 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 you know, all this stuff. It might be true, it might not be true, and I'm not an expert on that thing. But you remember the same accusation actually came from China regarding Windows, Microsoft Windows about maybe 15 years ago. Some of you may be too young, but 15 years ago. And, and it was resolved. And how did they resolve? The two governments get together with Microsoft, and Microsoft was under a certain environment was able to convince by reviewing code, convince, and then escrowed it, and, you know, things happened. Right? So similar things might, needs to happen here. All right. Well, as you can see, we could spend all day talking about this, but we are going to make room the next oh, yeah. speaker. Please join me in thanking John Chen.